chart. This is a chronological chart of Kemet and also of Kush. As I said before, these names were more contemporary names. Nubia was not called Nubia in ancient times. It was called Tani Hisi. And of course, we already know that Egypt was called Kemet. As well as lower Egypt is Tamari and upper uh, Kemet is Tani Hisi. One of the earliest periods would be the Badarian period. That is possibly the time period that Haru and Akit was built during that particular period because the Badarian period is around 5,000 years BCE. That would make that colossal over 7,000 years old. Now whether it was made the same as it is now, it may have been rebuilt in different periods of time. And then we come down to the various areas they call the, uh, the Kata 1 and 2 and the early dynasties. But the most important here is that Kemet and Nubia, as by the way said, is one. It's part of the indigenous Nile Valley civilization. But when you were at the Nubia Museum, Kush was not even up there on that chart. Even though you saw that many of the Greeks were up there, many of the Assyrians and Persians and all these others were on that chart, but Nubia being the Kush in ancient times, that is the mother of Egypt. So the civilization and all civilizations travel along the river banks. We come down to the earliest dynasties that we see right here from one and two. That would be the early period of Norma. Also, we see the, the third and through the sixth dynasty. We know that was a great period because that is known as the first golden age. It's a golden age because our ancestors are building the pyramids, the step the world's first stone building. And then the first, when you see intermediate period, this is invasions are coming in. That's why those pyramids in the fifth and sixth dynasty are not built on the same level that you saw when we were in the third dynasty with uh, the Step Pyramid and also the Old Kingdom with Khufu Kafamekara because we were not at war, we're not fighting. You cannot build if you're dealing with invasions. But at the intermediate period, this is when invasions are starting to come in during this time, political instability. And then there was a recovery. That recovery happened in the Middle Kingdom. But still, those pyramids in the Middle uh, uh, Kingdom is still not built on the same level that they were back during the time of the Old Kingdom. Then we have a, another intermediate period. That means something's happening here again. Every time you see that intermediate period, that means invasions are coming in. This invasion was very devastating on Kemet. It's very devastating on Kemet because these are the Hicksoaks invaders. They came in and enslaved the Kemetic African for 200 years. That's the only documentation of an enslavement when these Hicksoaks came in and tell the second in Tiles and the Cadmoses who came up from the area that you were at when we were in Waset to rage war to kick these Hicksoaks out and eventually it was Ned Pettyrod, most of the first, who finally expelled the Hicksoaks. That's the only documentation of expulsion of a large group of people. Somebody took the original story of Kemet and turned it into a Moses Exodus story of Jews being ex okay, Exodus out of Egypt, when there was no documentation. In fact, they even took from Neb Pettyrod Moses' name, Admos, and made a Moses. And that's even according to a Jewish historian named Josephus. Then we have the New Kingdom. That's the time period when we were walking through the temple of Ipanasut, and we're talking about these great Nisus. All of those starting up the uh, 18th dynasty, Neb Pettyrod Moses, the first, that's the third golden age, because it's a golden age because Kemet is free now. It's free from the invaders that occupied Kemet at this time. So that, was, that goes from Neb Pedrod most the first. We're talking about Amenhotep III, the main Kemperat to be maze, the king, a king to the common, going back to also Hatshepsut. So that was a very great period as well. Then we've got another intermediate period. So now we have these intermediate periods that are taking place. Assyrians, Persians, Others are eventually coming in. So here, the mother of Kemet, the Kushite dynasty, we're talking around the 25th dynasty, equally had to come up and save, save their daughter, save Kemet. They did, they did not come in as plunderers and destroyers like the uh, Syrians, like the Persians. Why? Because this one now valley indigenous culture and civilization is coming from one. They'd be like Greece and Rome. It's all part of that European civilization, okay? So the Kushites came up as saviors. Then we come down to the late period, okay? During this particular period, we met Tanabal. 
The Tannable would have been the last ruler of ancient Kemet, not Cleopatra. Cleopatra, as I said, was from the Ptolemaic line. And her father being Ptolemy Philadelphia, this is where we see that her lineage is coming from. But like I said, when an invader comes in and conqueror comes in, do they bring their wives? No. no. So when they defeat that nation, they rape the women. It's wide open. So we know that her line is coming from the Ptolemy, but we do know that her African Kemetic blood is there because of the invasions that came in. So that's during now the Ptolemy period. Is that period indigenous to Kemet? No. no. But now we see the Roman period, as I talked about. So the Ptolemy period was 300 years. The Roman period was about 400 years. The Byzantine Roman, uh, period, Roman period was another almost 400 years. So we're talking about 1,000 years. And then when the Arabs came in 641 AD. Now look at how short this period is from the European time period of the Ptolemy down to the Byzantine Romans. Look how short. Now look at all this history here prior to any Greeks and Romans. That kind of gives us at least a visual view of the long dynasties of Africa, of the Kemetic Nile Valley, and then we come to this short period, but from the Ptolemaic, Roman, Byzantine, Islamic period, this is where we see that Kemet had already laid down ancient African civilization, and others from these periods copied many ideas from this. So you can't say that your child, who's a baby, and your child said that they were first before you. You can't say that your child taught you how to talk. You can't tell, say to people that your child taught you how to walk. So we can't say that this period that made up the Western world taught this civilization the idea of God, the idea of spirituality or religion and civilization. When you look at all these thousands of years long before this time period right here. So what happened is, they literally cut this time off. That's why when you look at your, your time, when it says 2000, uh, what is it, 2021, okay? How do you count time down? How does, look at the time period. How do you count time down, way up here, 2955, down, 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 and then we now got 2021. How do you do that? You literally just cut Africans' time out. That's what Augustus Caesar did. He literally cut African committed time out and started their Western time, which started that time period, 1 AD. And they put it in the Serapis Jesus name, and that is the Serapis Jesus Anno Dominion. And the year of their Lord, say it right, Serapis Jesus, that starts their time period. So that should give us a reference right there. You count time down, then you start back up. So in other words, this becomes totally obsolete. Mm -hmm. And then their time starts right here. So this kind of gives you a reference. But when we deal with, with Cush, we're really going back. We're really going back because without Cush, there would have never been a chemist. And where is the home of Amun? Way down in Jua, that the Arabs refer to as Jebel Bakel. And Kemet always acknowledged that as the home of their of Amun. And that is the blackest part of the Nile Valley, and that's down in the Sudan. It is now called Sudan today. And over here is some of the soldiers, because this land here of Nubia was known as the land of the Moab. Here it's called the Hymn Hymn, the war cry. So again, Kemet depended on the Tanahisi.